What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Dudes Behind the Foods. I'm Tim Chantarangsu. And I'm David So. You motherfuckers thought you got rid of me, huh? Wow, dude, we missed you. I missed you, man. Dude, when I saw Sherry Cola as the first guest, <laughs> that fucking made me laugh so hard. I was like, yo, you talk about the perfect replacement, dude. You talk about somebody. I, all I had to do was just grow out these Japanese fucking pussy hairs on the side of my face. I knew it would be perfect, too, because all the comments were like, I thought it was David in a wig. Until I clicked and actually watched. <laughs> then he started talking about his pussy. He's like, this is a little weird, dude. With his Miley Cyrus voice. <laughs> hey, the first time I ever met Sherry Cola, everybody said, like, yo, this girl looks and acts like you. I'm yeah. like, that's no fucking way. Because there's a lot of people who say that I look like them. But right. generally, I look like a little fat Asian baby. So yeah. there's a lot of people that I do look like. And I went when I first met Sherry, I just went, God damn it. <laughs> she, <laughs> she looks just like me. She legit looks like me. And you know what's funny? I sent her that and she's like, I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, you're out your fucking mind. She's in disbelief. I we took a side by side photo on our Instagram and it looks even more not so much that we're twins, but we look like siblings. Y'all look alike. Yeah, we look like we're in the same family. Yes, man. And I don't know, you know, I know and sometimes you can't say that because like Asian shit, but like no, no. no y'all look like you could be siblings for sure. Yeah, if somebody told me to go fuck myself, I just hook up with Sherry Cole. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey man, welcome back. I missed you. Hey man, let me tell you something. I got some Korean treats for you. Oh my god. Oh, I brought you a uh two Turmeric latte from a place called Hilltop Cafe. How did you know I was inflamed? Oh, you look inflamed, my guy. <laughs> that just means I'm fat. <laughs> oh. It's it's like, you know, it's cold now, but it's 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 tasty. It is tasty. It's a little healthy. It tastes mm -hmm. very India-like. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well. I want you to try a couple of interesting snacks here. Sh show me, show me, please. Because you just got back from Korea about a week ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, Robin would like some snacks, but in Korea, everything has a dead animal in it. Fun. <laughs> like, God damn it. <laughs> oh. Do you know what seokgang is? No. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, when I was a kid, there was this very specific shrimp chip snack that every Korean kid ate, and it's called seo kang. Seo is just shrimp. Okay. And kang is, I don't know, fucking cracker. Chip. Um, yeah, so all you kangs out there watching our show. Yeah, you little kang piss means gangster. <laughs> um, so Ooh. America has their versions of things, right? But then Korea always has like multiple iterations of it because we only get a certain amount from whatever sells the best. They had a Italian truffle seo kang, and this right here, my friend, here wow. we go. I am salivation. Whoa. So I recognize these little things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure I've had those before. It's but like one of the most common Korean snacks, crackers. Oh, my God. The truffle immediately punches you in the nostrils. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Give you the ASMR. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mmm. It's very mm. delicious, huh? That's some good shit, bro. <laughs> That's some good shit, huh? Mm. And it's very hard to bring the shit back because it's in a soft ass bag, and somehow this stayed intact. Wow, that's great. That's fucking addictive. Like that right there with some beer and shit. Mm. Fire. It tastes like you know the shrimp chips we all shrimp chips we all buy from like the Asian market. Mm -hmm. But with that little truffle in there, that truffle with the shrimp is popping. It's kind of crazy good, huh? It's addictive wow. good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. That's snack number one. Let me tell you something. So I went to South Korea, guys, uh, specifically to see family and then also take uh, hanbok photos. Hanboks, if you guys don't know, are like the traditional Korean shit. Mm -hmm. And so we took engagement photos. And let me tell you something. Asian parents are the fucking most annoying creatures <laughs> Ever. I mean, I could have told you that. Let me tell you some shit. So <laughs> before, when we got these photos done, right, and I'm pretty sure like every Asian or immigrant kid can relate to their parents just kind of like criticizing them about fucking everything. Mm -hmm. Even when you do something fucking nice. Yeah. Nice. So, so we get, 
So we get these photos, and then Mariel, she warns me. She goes, hey, don't send them the photos. Just give them an album when it's done. And, but I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to share this shit with my parents. I'm like, cool, I'm going to show them this, these, these cute little heavenly photos of us in our engagement shit. Send it over to them. And the first thing my mom says, she calls me, she goes, that's all you took? <laughs> I'll tell you something, bitch. That's how you fucking talk to me? And I, 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 I was like, all right, cool. First defense, I'll let that go. And then my dad, I get a text from him later, right? Yeah. He fucking edits the photos. <laughs> and he goes, this is better. <laughs> Bro, if you fucking... <laughs> I took the photos for you, bitch! They were hella expensive. <laughs> And so, it, by the way, if you, when you're in Korea and you do this photo shoot, right, it's not you show up and you dress up and you go. Yeah. They send you to the one that we went to, a very famous, like, makeup artist studio. They mm. get You get your makeup, your hair done. That's like a two, three hour ordeal. Mm. Then you go to the site and then they dress you up in whatever color that you want. You get to choose out the fit, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we shoot this shit. And then my mom, she goes, I was like, hey, that's kind of rude. I was like, that's a little rude. Like, you know, most people, they just go, oh, it looks really good. <laughs> and then she goes, well, I know other people who got multiple photos with different outfits. And I said, listen, it doesn't work that way. Hmm? It's a seven-hour ordeal. If I wanted another look, that's another seven hours. It's, yeah. another, it's another booking I have to do. Yeah. She goes, that's not how it is. Oh, I'm my like, God. <laughs> were, you, were you, bitch, were you there? <laughs> were you fucking in the room with me? And so I'm telling her this. I'm like, no, no. She goes, well, when I did it, I was like 4,000 years ago. <laughs> when you did it, that was just clothes. <laughs> you stupid, stupid idiot. You fucking dummy. Your first book was the Bible, bitch. Don't tell me how shit's done in Korea now. You rode to the wedding on a Korean dinosaur. <laughs> and she goes, when I went to the my thing, I drove in a stag. <laughs> and so she's like criticizing these photos that I gave her. And she goes, no, 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 no. You, how come you didn't get uh, shoot uh, photos in a suit? I'm like, because I could get that done in L.A. Yeah, yeah. I could do it however I, I did. I came specifically here because this is what they recommended. Yeah. And they told us to wear these certain hanboks that are modern now. So a lot of like young mm. people don't wear the old fashioned hanboks, which are super heavy, I see. multiple colors. Now it's very simplified and super modern and they're kind of fly. Mm -hmm. And so she goes, no, you, you got the wrong one. Oh my God. <laughs> After you flew to Korea for this shit. Yeah. And I was like, dude, you're being so rude. She goes, you know what? You're stressing me out. Oh my, are you serious? <laughs> she says, you are stressing me out. <laughs> she got the pictures and she's like, pacing around the house <laughs> fucking pissed calling all her friends like can you believe what my son has done well, my son is a retard <laughs> she was like she was like fucking getting on me about this and she you know what she does that pisses me off i was like hey i was like how am i stressing you out you're insulting me yeah right and she goes don't talk to me. She hangs up on me mid-sentence. Are you mid -sentence. shitting me? She fucking hangs up on me mid-sentence. <laughs> and so I'm in the car going, ah! <laughs> so pissed. <laughs> I tell my brother to explain to her because maybe my Korean's not good enough. Yeah, yeah. And so she calls me back. She goes, I know what's wrong. I go, what's wrong? Go. She goes, I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is, is that you can't speak Korean. Okay. And that's why we don't. We had this miscommunication. Okay. And I blew up. I was like, you dumb, dumb idiot. <laughs> She's it's saying, not your fault. I was like, it's not because I don't understand what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> you're being hella rude. Mm. And so my brother had explained to him. He goes, no, he understands what you're saying. You are being disrespectful. I was, and so this, this is a cherry on top. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get a package at my house. I'm like, what is this package? Oh, no. What is this? Yeah. My dad goes, check your mailbox. Oh, my God. I open the mailbox. He sends me the better edited photos that he printed from his house. Of saying the, of the photos yeah. that I sent him that he edited himself. Okay. And he goes, use this one. This is better. That's so funny, dog. That's so <laughs> you, hilarious. You motherfucker. What did he do? And what did he even do to him? So he added like these little year 2000 little swirly lines. <laughs> <laughs> The border. He added graphics. <laughs> graphics to the fucking <laughs> photos. And then he put a little halo over it. You're lying. I'm dead fucking serious. I grabbed that shit <laughs> and I tore it to a thousand <laughs> pieces. And my dad calls me. He goes, how do you like the photos? I went, what do you think? <laughs>
What do you think? Why would I I I specifically told you not to edit those photos. And by the way, the photos I gave him were samples. Mm. So he fucking put it's all blurry. <laughs> all of those are blurry as shit. And he goes, "Hey, when I come to your house, I want you to hang it up." <laughs> I tore that shit to a thousand fucking pieces. You could have auctioned it off for so much money. I don't care. <laughs> Looking at it made me visibly upset. And they still are like, I don't know what his problem is. I talk. <laughs> they're like, so they're all telling their friends, this guy's crazy. They're like, what's that? I, I, I made him new photo. I fixed his photos. <laughs> Asian parents are the worst. <laughs> I fucking, two days of this shit, dude. Two days of this. I mean, you came in ready to talk. Yes. <laughs> I saved the story for this podcast, and I haven't gotten it off my chest. <laughs> oh wait, is this the story you've been? Oh, this is the story this you've is been. The story. <laughs> <laughs> these these stupid. And you know what the funny thing is? Mariel started making me mad. Yeah, my wife, because the way I release my anger is through words, right? Okay. I don't hit anything. I don't break anything anymore. I don't do any of that shit. Yeah. So I'm sitting here. This is never shit that I would say to my mom's face, right? Mm. But I know that she's calling me an idiot right. and creating a retard, a dummy, and she's cursing out in the air. I do the same thing. It's, it's a so family trait. Yeah. So I'm in the room pacing. I'm like, this dumb cunt bitch motherfucking <laughs> asshole. I swear to fucking God, I saw my fucking soccer. And in Mary's stomach. like, babe, you shouldn't disrespect your mom like that. She did say that. <laughs> <laughs> she said that shit. And that made me blow the fuck up. I was like, it's my mom! <laughs> I'll say whatever the fuck I want about my mom! This is our love language! She goes, well, it hurts my feelings when you talk about your mother that what? way. What? I fuck. I was like, every woman in my life stresses me out. <laughs> From the fucking one that birthed me out of her pussy. <laughs> to the to one the that w- lets you into <laughs> it. <laughs> I hate them all! <laughs> Why do you ladies stress me out so much? Well, I brought you beignets. <laughs> Yay. These are from Hilltop as well. Oh. Um, and they're um, I don't know if they're still as flaky and fluffy as they were when they were fresh, but these are beignets oh, with a little uh, berry berry dip. I feel better. I'm sweating though. Here, man, have oh. a beignet. Have a beignet. Oh my god, is this raspberry raspberry jam? Mmm. Oh. Mmm. That motherfucker goes thick. Oh, this right here. Hello. Oh. Have you ever had beignets? You had beignets in um, New Orleans. Yes, I have. Those are better. Crazy, of course. Yeah. I mean, well, these aren't fresh, but because they've been, I had to bring them from my house area. But uh, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me show you something else, guys. Go to Korea. Amazing experience. Everything's super technologically advanced. Customer service is on point. I come to the states. I'm like, America sucks. Is the customer service on point out there, bro? I thought Koreans had the uh, reputation of being rude. They do. And it's like a mix, right? So it's definitely not like Japanese level. Mm. And what I mean by that, not as in better or worse, but Japanese people have this thing of like, like for example, I left my camera inside of an Adidas store, store. and the guy chased me down three blocks. Mm -hmm. Korean people have been like, i save it for later. Mm. They won't steal it, but they'll be like, oh, it sucks that this person lost their shit. Mm -hmm. But their service is really, really good. There's no tipping in Korea, just like Mm. there's no tipping in Japan. Mm -hmm. So what you pay for is that's it. And I didn't realize how much money we're saving because also food is cheaper there too. Mm. And everything is better. The mm. competition is so high and Seoul is such a metropolitan city. It's kind of like New York. You have a bad restaurant, you're fucked. You don't get to survive more than like a month or two. Oh, because there's so many. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's like a word of mouth stuff. They have an, an app called Naver that they use. Neighbor? Naver, N-A-V-E-R. Naver. That's their Google. Mm. And so, you know, when, when people say a place is bad, like nobody really goes because there's literally a restaurant every fucking corner. Mm-hmm. Everywhere you go, you can find a restaurant. It doesn't matter. So if it's bad, it's bad. It's not going to do well. Okay. Versus here in the States, if it's bad, there's, a, there's some people that'll go. You could probably stay afloat. If, it's, if it looks kind of decent, you'll be fine. But over there, it, it's highly, highly competitive. Now, you used to say, because people have told us that, the food in K-Town is better than the food in actual Korea. Oh, so check it out. Lies! Really? You know nothing. Really? I was so shocked how much better the Korean food is there. Really? And the reason why is because every aspect of the dish that comes out is really good. So when you go to, like, Korean restaurants here, right? Let's mm-hmm. say you go to um, a Korean restaurant that um, specializes in a, s- a certain jjigae or, like, a stew. Mm-hmm. Well, the stew is really fucking good. And they kind of just have side dishes out for you, for you to eat. Mm-hmm. And they're decent. For them, 
their main dish is good, and all their side dishes have the same amount of care. Mm. Their panchan has the same amount of care as their main dish. Interesting. So that's the biggest difference that I saw with a lot of these popular restaurants. Also, the service is better, and surprisingly, beef is cheaper there. Really? Because our beef prices inflated so much. <clears throat> Before, beef was really expensive, considered in Korea. Mm-hmm. It's cheaper there now. Are you sick of Korean food after being there? How long were you out there for? I was there for two weeks. Damn, son. And it felt like a ble- It feels like I didn't even go. Really? There's so much shit to do in Korea. Mm-hmm. And more so if you speak Korean, too, because it's just a lot easier to navigate. Right, right, right. And if you know people, I understand why people say that they didn't, they thought the LA food in, uh, the Korean food in LA was better is because mm. they just don't know how to get around. Mm. They don't know where to go. Mm. They don't know a lot of these restaurants that we went to. They're not on Yelp. They're not on <clears throat> YouTube or whatever. It's their her, Mario's family members that are showing us these restaurants. Right. And it's so fucking good. There's no way that you would have found these restaurants unless okay. you knew how to read and write Korean and you were on the neighbor app. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Korean food is next level, there, dude. Man, it's well, so fucking good. I want to go one day. Dude, you you would fuck. Let me tell you something too, by the way. Yeah. I'm the average height. Really? Yeah. Really? I've, I've never felt so short in my life. Really? All these young kids in Korea are fucking giants. And some of them, kind of fat. Well, mm. then maybe I won't go to Korea because <laughs> I like I like it when uh, I go to the Asian clubs and we're all the same height. Hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> You're about the height of like most like 50-year-old women in Korea. <laughs> oh, my favorite. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to fantasize about 50-year-old Korean women and we'll be right back. How addictive are these? So good. <laughs> so fucking good, huh? So good, man. It's good to have you back, bro. Like, I missed you, man. You know, like, I feel like I had so much I wanted to, like, you know, I've I've seen, I've been pretty consistently hanging out with you and filming with you over the past few years. Like four years, dude. Yeah. Well, that's the weird thing, right? Whenever I'm either talking on the phone, there's either two people. Yeah. <clears throat> it's you mm-hmm. or it's Khalif. Ah, ah, <laughs> and so ah. whenever I'm giggling, Mario's like, which one of your <laughs> fucking girlfriends are you talking to? And what the fuck is that? <laughs> Bro, that's bad luck. Why do you have the fucking hood homie death shirt on? So, <laughs> what the fuck did you get that done? So, if you guys can't see this, um, if you know. if you remember when I wore my Veda t shirt, oh, I'm gonna die. My Veda airbrush shirt, David said it looked like you know an RIP homie shirt, and I was like, yo, I'm gonna make a special David So airbrush shirt. It says, rest in peace, fat. No, no, no. In loving memory of fat David So. Oh, the previous one is Previous dead. one. Oh. Because you're a slim and sexy boy now. Can I tell you this though? Like, I literally told people <laughs> that if I die early, everybody has to wear that shirt at the funeral. <laughs> I want one of those fucking, you know, hey, he was a good man. <laughs> you know? He never got in trouble. Let's get, let's get a look. I'm going to get a little closer to you here. <clears throat> so y'all can get the, uh, just kind of this camera. Oh my God. Look at that shit, dude. Oh. It's, it's one of my dream death come true. <laughs> If I die, I want everybody to have a David Homie shirt on. <laughs> that shit was so sad in the hood. Like somebody would die, and it's so funny because everybody would talk about either their kid or their friend, like they're the most nicest people on earth. But I would know them, and I'm like, that person was a piece of shit. That motherfucker got shot because let me tell you something. That fool shot some other people. You know what? And I think about this. I think about death a lot. I'm not gonna lie. I think about death a lot, and um, a part of thinking about death is thinking about how you'll be remembered. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's kind of like, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a reason why I stopped using, uh, I switched <clears throat> from my stage name to my real name. And uh, Oh, that's the reason That's why. one of the reasons, because it was like, we were in the heart of the pandemic, you know, and I was just kind of thinking about life and shit. And I was thinking, if I died today, if I caught COVID and died, right? If I was one of these people that it hit crazy, um, would I want to be remembered by this YouTube name I made up. You know what I'm saying? Not that I made up, that I, you know, just like a silly YouTube account. That's that's where Sidebar? it started. Yeah. That suit that you have, the fucking Fresh Prince. Ooh! Bro, that shit was so fire, dude. Thanks, man. When I saw that shit, I'm like, I should have done that. Thank you, bro. Okay, we'll that, talk about it. Okay. We'll talk about it. I'll talk about death first. Fucking- Fire. <laughs> so I was like, do I wanna do I wanna be remembered as Timothy De La Ghetto, which was like just a silly YouTube name, right? That's stuck. You know what I'm saying? And then I was like, nah, if if I died today, well like you know, what is my legacy? And I was thinking about, okay, you know, I've been kind of, I've been trying to put on for like Asian people and Asian dudes specifically. And I've been like all about like, hey man, be proud of where you come from, be proud of your language, be part of your, be proud of your culture. So I was like, I don't need a stage name. 
I'm going to embrace Tim <clears throat> Chantharongsu. Because originally I thought I'd have to get a, a Hollywood catchy name because they're not going to be able to say Chantharongsu. But then I realized if I want to be at the level that I want to be at, they're going to have to know how to say Chantharongsu. You know, I fucked up with my name because I put David So Comedy and everybody's like, what's your last name? And I'm like, it's so. Oh, they're like, David is so comedy. Yeah, that's what they thought the whole gimmick was. I like, no, my last name is so. <laughs> and so and nobody knew my last name for the longest time. I really? fucked up. Fuck them. Yeah, fuck them. But enough about you, my amazing suit, yeah. Um. Dude, that suit, by the way, yeah, I saw that. I was like, man, that's one of those things where you look at it, I'm like, I wish I would have thought of that. So what a blessing, bro. Um, you know, I, I got to attend the first ever Gold House Gala, okay? Ba, 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 ba. And if y'all don't know what Gold House is, it's a, um, you know, like a, um, what would you call it? They always send boxes for like red carpet affairs for Asian American stuff. Yeah, and, and they, they're like a an, a, a, an alliance of um, Asian like writers and producers and actors, a coalition, if you will, that celebrates um Asian creators and Asian art and Asian movies and like they always have like premieres for like um, Asian led movies and shit like that and they're all about you know pushing forward um, Asians in Hollywood and just in the whole industry right so they had their first ever gala and um, <clears throat> normally you know I hate dressing up for shit when I get invited to galas I'm like oh fine time to dust off the same old suit I always wear right but this time I was like oh, okay this, this feels kind of special and plus I had an idea to do this fucking suit you know so uh, if y'all watch The Fresh Prince, Fly. oh, thank you, bro. Uh, there's, uh, you know, he, you know, everyone knows The Fresh Prince turns his school uniform inside out. And I was like, man, what if I made this like a tailored dope ass suit, you know? So I Googled who could do this for me. I found a company called Number 33 um, and they did some shit for like Tyler, the creator. They, they, they like doing shit like this, right? Mm. So I hit him up. I was like, hey, man, would you guys be able to do this for me by um, what month was that? May? Yeah, and they were like, yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah, yeah. This, and they finally they found a fabric. They're like, yo, this isn't exactly it, but this is. Oh, I was like, oh, perfect. And um, they did exactly what I wanted. It was lit. <clears throat> well, in general too, because when I first saw the fit, I was like, hey, that's pretty fucking nice. And then when you put it next to the fresh prints, I made it that much better. It just looks in general, it just looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and it's it's very clean, but it has just enough where it stands out. Yeah, I was like, that's fucking nice, thanks, man. Man, it was uh, one of those genius little boy. Hey, thanks, man. Well, originally I wanted us to go, and I wanted to do Dumb and Dumber tuxedos. Oh, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> that would have been so fucking hilarious. The next one, dog. Next time you and me both get invited to a gala, don't don't delete the email because we're we're gonna go, and then I'm gonna hit up number thirty three, and we're gonna get tailored. Dumb and Dumber tuxes. All right? I have a reputation for not wanting to go to these things. <laughs> like, there's another Asian event that I'm invited to every fucking year, and I just never respond. <laughs> mm. And it's look, it's not because it's like I have anything against it. I just don't like public events. Like, yeah. I, I don't like photos being taken of me. Mm -hmm. I don't like having to schmooze with people, especially people that I don't know. And you know, there's a lot of like conversation that happens in the Hollywood, and and I think like the most annoying thing is like when they say like, "Oh, I love your stuff." I go, "What's one video?" Mm. It's blank. It's like you don't have to say that stuff. Just say, just say hi. <laughs> you right. know, you don't like. I can do nothing for you. Yeah. All right. So just, just say hi. Because like the idea behind that too is, it's, it's fuck Hollywood. Mm -hmm. We need to go ahead and lift each other up and mm -hmm. be real about shit. Well, now you just made it another sect of Hollywood, but just with Asian people. So you're still doing the elitism shit. Don't yeah. do that stuff. Leave that shit at the door. Be if we're trying to be better. But know? there's also good people to talk to up there, bro. It's part of the job. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm not very good at it. It's, it is a part of the job. <laughs> yeah. It is 100% a part of the job. In any type of work and facet that you do, schmoozing, mm -hmm. having great conversation with people is a part of the job. Mm -hmm. So I'm not very good at that. Mm. I'm just there to like eat the, the lorries. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was free fucking... Uh, uh, like Henny privilege all night, dog. It was uh oh the XO, did the yeah XO, yeah the XO, XO shit, shit. yeah mm -hmm. yeah. So it was like you know the free Henny. You know who's really good? Who's really good at like? Because I feel like I'm good at you know networking, politics, and a little bit. But I also like I I hate bigging myself up. Mm -hmm. Um, dumb was there. He was probably like my my little buddy through the whole night because we were sitting next to each other and we we're just kind of like drinking together. Was he wearing something with an open chest? <laughs> his chest was out. Tattoo? His chest was out. Yeah. Yeah. I, the funny thing is, I. Dumb, I love this fool. I just know him. <laughs> I just know him now. He either has uh, a suit on with like an open chest, yep. or he has like his pigtails. Um, he had his suit on with uh, with his chest out. Yeah, yeah. No pigtails this time. No pigtails. His, right. his, his, his just kind of long hair was flowing. Oh, sexy. But he was so good at like, yo, 
let me introduce you to this person. And while we're there, being like this this fool right here, um, one of the you know um, uh, the OGs of YouTube, blah blah blah, he has this following, blah blah blah. You guys should talk. We should all get together and this and this and that. Because I feel like, especially now that he's launched his um, you know his production company, I think he's really 100 percent into like let's make these connections, let's make these moves. So that was really dope. He was like really like my biggest cheerleader that night. Because even though I'm good at, I like I'm good at talking and and doing that type of shit. If somebody um, like approaches me. And they're like, "Hey, I've seen your this and I've seen your stuff. I do this." I'm like, "Oh, definitely. Like, you know, I'm working on this. Let's 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 you know, let's grab lunch, let's exchange numbers, blah blah blah." But when no one knows who I am, I hate having to. Oh, what do you do? Because this is what I do. See, that's the hard part, right? Yeah. It's like because when it's already given to you and people kind of know who you are, they kind of come up to you. Yeah. There's no like, "Hey, this is what I do. This is who I am." That feels weird because I think like maybe it's also just an Asian thing too of learning how to humble yourself. Right, mm. but when you when you do that, sometimes it's like that idea of like uh, closed mouths don't get fed, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when I look at other people who, albeit at first, it's like, damn, this motherfucker is trying so hard. There's mm-hmm. a reason why, because mm-hmm. out of the hundred people that they introduce <laughs> to themselves, maybe one of them will remember them. Yeah, and they just have to do that. It's just very hard to do, especially I think for you, it makes more sense because you have always had this goal of wanting to be in entertainment. Yeah, like this is your like. When, I was shocked when you told me that you had that goal in high school. Like this was it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm gonna get an Oscar. I'm gonna be an actor. I'm gonna do this stuff. <clears throat> I had none of that. Mm. This is something I kind of just stumbled on. Mm. So it was like I wanted to just do stand up comedy. I didn't even have care to be like the biggest stand up comic in the world. I just enjoyed doing it. Right. So when I when YouTube happened. It was everything was a whirlwind. I'm mm. like, oh, what the fuck is this? Like, what is what is any of this type of shit? How do I live? Am I supposed to leverage this? Mm-hmm. You know, what am I supposed to fucking do? Mm-hmm. So like the idea of me going and schmoozing has never been a part of my equation. So now it's like learning that shit's very fucking hard. Don't trip, dog. I'll big you up <laughs> when we go to this event together because we have to stand next to each other so people understand. I'm, so anybody, not, you just look like an idiot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anybody coming up to me is coming up to you. So don't trip. <laughs> We're we're in this together, all right? <laughs> like this guy's weird. Oh, I get it. <laughs> like, oh, he decided to go with the orange. Yeah, it's, oh. 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 oh, so don't trip. He's just the Asian guy with a bowl cut. Like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh are we doing the bowl cuts too? <laughs> Fuck you, let's do it. <laughs> I'll fucking do it. I don't care. I'll just one time. I'll do. I'll grow it out and then snip, 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 snip. No, but I'm Lloyd. You're Harry. Oh, okay. Well, then time for me to grow my shit out, dude. <laughs> my fucking thin ass hair. Um, your hair, you said you weren't able to get a haircut oh, the whole God. time in Korea. I, this is the thing. Like, once you have a good barber, yeah, I just can't switch out. I'm too scared. I'm too scared if they fuck up the fade, mm. and then he has to come in and fix it, and then for a whole other month, I'm going to look like shit. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm, I'm stuck with this guy, Sergio, and if Sergio <laughs> dies, I'm fucked again. And Sergio's been doing his thing. He's all over the place. He's yeah, like, man. Sergio it. just falling in love and traveling to Colombia. Yeah, and doing art installations in Greece and shit or whatever the fuck he's doing. Hey, if you guys ever get to get a, a cut by this young kid, he is... I think the reason why I also like getting a haircut, but he's so positive. Yeah. And when I walk away, I feel re-energized. You know what? Look... Uh, so I also, you know, my barber is like, my main barber is like, you know, Vince, Vince the barber, mm-hmm. who who cuts like so many like NBA players and shit. So he's always traveling. He's not always in town when I need to he cut. He like honestly revolutionized like that whole barber game in terms of like <laughs> the, the value of what a good haircut is. Yeah, facts. You know? But he's gone a lot because he's popping. So David introduced me to his barber, Sergio. And what you're saying is 100% facts because after like my first cut and, and conversation with Sergio, and God, not to keep, not to be on Sergio's dick because he's going to watch this, but like... <laughs> His his excitement and enthusiasm for and passion for what he does and his like art and what he's trying to do like low key rejuvenated something in me because it reminded me of me when I was younger oh. and I was hungry. You know what I'm saying? Because you know when you get older and you get you 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 get a little successful at shit, you get a little lazy, right? You get a little oh. comfortable. Like talking to Sergio after him cutting my hair and being like, "I want to do this, I want to do this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this." Hey, bro, I gotta do this. I'm like, "Hey, man, I feel that this hunger, like I miss this." Oh, it's you, man. Yeah, and I was like, "Yes, man, yes, bro." A hundred percent inspiring. You're like that old dude in prison, and you meet that young guy. He's like, "I was once you. <laughs> I had a bright future, <laughs> and I let it all go to waste." But he does have that that 
this guy could get excited about anything, mm-hmm. right? And I think for him too, his goalpost constantly moves, but in a good way. Mm-hmm. He goes, "Cool, this is what I'm doing now. I fucking love it. Oh shit, I could try this." And he he tries things in a way where failure isn't really an option in terms of how he approaches it. Right. He just does it. Doesn't know if he's necessarily be good at it, but he'll do it. And I always say too, like that's a really good approach. And somewhere along the way, I kind of lost that too, mm-hmm. where I'm just. Doing, I wouldn't say just safe bets, but I'm just very comfortable. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. Like, oh, okay. The podcast stuff is doing well. We're right. doing all this stuff, and then next thing you know, you're kind of just complacent. We're not taking risks anymore. Yeah, dude, I gotta start doing sketches and lose money again. Oh, uh, me too, dog. <laughs> me too. Well, shout out to shout out to Sergio, um, BFR Studios. If you guys yeah, want to follow, Born from Rain Studios. Yeah, if you want to follow him on Instagram, good guy. Yeah, I remember too, like getting a. I used to get like these eight dollar haircuts because you know when you're broke, that's all you could fucking get. Mm. But dude, these fucking Vietnamese barbers were the most hilarious people ever, because they know that their haircuts fucking cheap, right? Mm. Eight bucks, and and there was specials where it would be like seven dollars, and then tip you give them three bucks, it will round out to ten, mm-hmm. right? But these are the worst fucking haircuts you could ever fucking get. And I knew this; I was just poor as shit, and yeah. I didn't care. And plus, I was playing basketball a lot, doing a lot of sports, so yeah. whatever. Most of the time, my head was shaved, anyways. Yeah. So these motherfuckers wouldn't fade shit. They would just go. Hit. <laughs> You could tell them what you want, and they just don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'll be like, "All right, hey, let's this time, let's you know, let's keep it a one here, and we'll keep it at like three up top. Just kind of do a little quick, little fresh, little buzz cut, right?" He goes, "No, one and two better. <laughs> <laughs> one and two better." And then I'm like, "Yo, what am I? What am I here for, dude?" <laughs> but at the same time, it's a seven dollar haircut. You can't go wrong with that. You can't go wrong with that. And then I remember. When I finally gained some money, I'm like, I'm gonna go get a nice fucking barber and then yeah. we'll cut my hair up. Yeah. And then I realized that haircuts are an hour. It's an hour. Yeah, dude. They take a whole ass hour. Vietnamese barbers, eight minutes out. <sighs> yeah. Get the fuck out of here, you fat boy. <laughs> and they just fucking shave my head and I leave. My mom used to take me to like her hair stylist when I was younger to get cuts. So Very I, different. I still would get would cut cuts. And then it wasn't until high school. Okay, oh, that's what happened. So I used to get like a like a kind of like a fade, and then I would you know comb my hair back. I would split it down the middle, but in a cool way though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sure. And then, <laughs> and then one day, my 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 hairstylist lady cut my hair too short, so I started spiking it. And then one day, after spiking it for a while, I just shaved it myself. And then I was shaving it bald, like you know, like a, maybe like a two in high school, until one day one of the homies I used to rap with at Paramount, Cameron. Oh no no! First my other homies like Rick. Chris and Kevin were like my boys who were a year older than me, but they were looking at my lineup, which I did not have. And Kev was like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? I'm like, what the fuck is this, Tim? They're like, yo, you need a lineup. So my boy Cameron took me to this black barbershop behind the school. It's called Million Dollar Spot. And took me to this guy named Tuan. Tuan was like the dude. Mm-hmm. Like people would, there would be like a, a, a barbershop full of barbers, but people would wait all day for Tuan because his cuts were that much better. Damn. Yeah. Okay, and, Vietnamese guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I used to wait for Tuan, except for one day, bro. And I told this story on the podcast, on my other podcast. But one day, I, I was like, there was a, a another dude. He was a a little person. You know what I'm saying? And no one wanted to get cut from him because he was a little person. He was in the new barbers. And I was like, you know oh, what? Because what? Wait, why? Why? Um, why what? Why didn't they want to get a cut? Yeah, because they just didn't know him. Oh, okay. And plus, maybe they're just like, man, I don't want, I don't, I don't know this so guy. Look at the size of that fucking fucking clipper and his tiny little <laughs> yeah, ass. So he had no control. Yeah, so <laughs> he had no line. And I was like, ah, I don't feel like waiting for Twan this time. I was like, I'm gonna give this guy a chance because I'm I'm a short guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this guy walks up to me, and I'm like, yeah, just you know, like a two and a lineup or whatever. And when I tell you, bro, my lineup was like here, and he went, yeah, and I was like, <laughs> oh my. God. And then Twan's in the corner. I fucking tell you so, man. You walk over there, get the haircut from him, whatever. Man. Twan's black. I don't know. No, Twan is Vietnamese. <laughs> no, Tim. Twan is Vietnamese. That's a Vietnamese name. I don't care, whatever, dude. <laughs> so I wore a headband for two weeks at school, dog. Beanies and hats and headbands for two weeks because this motherfucker fucked my hairline up. <laughs> You're telling me that a little person... <laughs> Who nobody went to. Yeah. You felt bad for. Yeah. And this one fucks up your head. Fucked me up. I just pictured him just holding the fucking clipper like this with two hands. <laughs> and him just going, oh, shit. Ugh. It was like a lawnmower who just got away from him. Yeah. Oh, and I, shit. And then, I, and then I beat his ass. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid motherfucker. No, nah, nah, I didn't beat his ass. But, yeah, that was uh, my, my worst haircut experience. I hope, hopefully you didn't have to pay for that. 
I forget. But also, did Sergio? Sergio has told you right that I'm the reason he started cutting hair. I know you're the fucking. Aunt. So when I hooked you to, dude, he was so happy. It's like, dude, I get to cut my hero's head, and then he went, <laughs> 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 he fucked up the side of your head. No. Yeah, when he told me that story, I was like, oh shit, because when Vince started giving me the the comb over with the hard part, I think that's when Sergio told me he first being like, oh, let me let me, let me get into this haircut and stuff. Look at that, dude. Well, look at that. I'm just the reason for everything. Main character. Universe revolves around me. There was a girl that commented on one of the podcasts. She's like, she's like, I, I love this podcast, but, um, but like Tim just needs to stop being so like, um, cocky or something. And I was like, what do you, I was like, wait, when, when? And, uh, we're going to talk about it right after this break. Sweaty Sack Summer is approaching, and it's time for you to prioritize the comfort of your crotch, McStinky Penis. That's why the kings of crotch comfort Manscaped have spent two years designing the most comfortable boxer briefs out there. I've had the honor of testing out these new boxes, and I can say it's the softest fabric that has ever touched me undergarments. So breathable that it's like gills for your groin. They even trademarked the jewel pouch, so you know it's serious. I think it's time you invest in your family jewel, so let's get your your bulge breathing and get 20% off free shipping plus free shipping I mean by using code dudes at manscaped.com I love my new manscaped boxes my balls are free like free children running in a garden looking for tomatoes I love it fantastic let's say you're on a date and your partner catch that manscaped on the waistband of your underwear it's almost guaranteed to raise some eyebrows she's like listen if I don't got to get a tuft of fluff in my mouth when I'm going down there to check to see if your peen peen is nice and clean, hey, hey, thank you, Manscaped. I love it. The fabric is great. And let me tell you something. The balls don't feel constricted. I don't know how you did it, but I feel supported and loose at the same time. Like a good relationship. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code DUDES at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code DUDES at Manscaped.com. Once the Boxers 2.0 touch your sack, you'll never. Back. So yeah, this girl like left a comment. She's like, she's either like stopping so cocky or like Tim needs to like um like humble himself or something like that. And I was like, when when was I when? What are you talking about? And I was kind of asked trying to ask for like a specific example. And in the episode, and she's like, no, just all the time, man. She's like, in your podcast, and your other podcast, she's like, not everything is about you, Tim. And I'm like, it literally is. It's his channel. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, oh well, that that's never gonna stop. Just so <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I thanks for watching, but that's literally, I'm never gonna stop that. <laughs> that, that comment's so funny too, because it's like, you gotta stop talking about yourself on your own YouTube channel, dude. <laughs> What do you what do you what do you mean? What is it what is he supposed to do? But the funny thing is, a lot of the people that I blocked on my channel, they're on this channel now. <laughs> you can't get away from this motherfucker, man. So they're like <laughs> just like I thought I escaped you. I was like, you didn't escape me, I blocked you. <laughs> and I remember because I looked into their channel and there's a guy. <laughs> This guy makes me laugh so hard. He's just like this random white dude that just, or an Asian guy, I'm not sure, mm. but he just goes fishing. <laughs> and he has like a fishing channel, and this fool fucking hates me. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking hates me. He goes, oh, Dave, there David goes again, trying to be funny. I was oh, like, God. damn, I've been trying for a long time. It's been pretty successful at it. Yeah, yeah, motherfucker. But I love it, though, because it's so funny. They'll, they'll You live so much inside their head that they'll find any way to find you. Mm. Any way they can get at you. It's like, damn, that's kind of nice <laughs> bro you, you you i understand why haters are are have private accounts always or like random accounts because let let them have anything on their shit like let's say your guy that hates you let's see he hated me because i'll go to their fucking channel sometimes and see what they're doing or i'll go to their instagrams um when i'm like pooping and bored and if this dude was talking shit to me and i saw his fucking fishing videos and he's like yeah they're, they're tim goes again trying to be funny i'm like yeah you can't fish though <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you caught a look, look, look at that fucking whack ass fish you caught, bro. Fucking like tadpole catcher, tiny ass fish, bro. Cause I, I, and they'll be like, they'll be like, wow, lol, you supposed to be a celebrity, but you got time to go look at my shit. I'm like, homie, I internet for a living. I know that's what we do. You think I don't have 30 <laughs> seconds to go look at your bum ass account with your stupid fish, with your skinny ass fish, dog? <laughs> Come on, son. Fucking poverty fish, bro. What's up, bro? <laughs> the fuck? Sorry ass fish? Probably out there all day for that fucking anorexic ass fish. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Could you ever do Naked and Afraid? <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. I fucking love that show. Uh huh, me too. Naked and Afraid is one of the best shows that were ever fucking created. So when, so I have a tendency to have a very uh, addictive personality. So when I start something, I go all the way in. Mm. Literally, dur- this is during a time that I was I was really really fat and I was losing weight. <laughs> uh, I dropped everything. I wasn't working. I wasn't doing YouTube videos. Uh, I was auditioning, but that was about it. Mm. And I was just living off of just whatever money that I saved. And this is a year I took a year off. I watched Naked and Afraid <laughs> every fucking day for that year. <laughs> At my house, I have a utility knife. <laughs> All right, I have fire starter. I have a fire starter. Yeah. The the flint and the rod. Yeah. Right. I have uh, a butt. So now. Because of Naked and Afraid, and I learned all these like survival tips, whenever I do the laundry and there's that lint ball, I don't throw it away. You know what that is? Kindling. It's, yes. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you, bro. When you go to my house, I'll show you the ball of laundry shit that I have. That's so funny. In case something goes down. And I got to. <laughs> if for some reason you don't know what Naked and Afraid is, it's a show on Discovery Channel. They drop usually a man off and a woman off in the fucking either like the desert or the random Amazon jungle, an area in the jungle, um, and they're allowed two items. Usually it's a pot to boil water in, and usually it's a fire starter. They used to not give them fire, they, like they used to not bring fire starters. Um, or they could bring a fire starter. Like, it was like one item that you can have. Yeah, yeah. So. But like for the recent ones, they can bring an item each and they'll get a fire starter sometimes. Yeah, because honestly, that's the make it or break it thing. And I think mm-hmm. for them as a studio, when they have this thing where everybody fails in the beginning because they can't start a fire, yeah. it fucks up the show. Yeah. Give them a fire starter and then one and then one object. Because them motherfuckers are like not only just like freezing, but they're they're hungry. So they have no clothes. They're hungry. They have 21 days to survive. And here's what's crazy, right? They literally don't even get money for it. Yeah. They just get bragging rights. Yep. And these motherfuckers, they love it. And I love watching it. Have you watched the XL? The XL one, yes. Yes. You know what the best season was? It was the first season. Was it? The first season was the best one because of the drama and the dynamics with that one blonde girl. She was the, the annoying one that, that thought that she was the best, but she couldn't do shit. And they all had a carrier. And there was Oh, of XL. Oh uh, no no no! Of the, of the original season, season mm. one, Mm-mm. and it was one they had this. She actually got a uh, dengue fever uh, mm. at the end of it, and she almost became paralyzed because oh, she got shit. bit by like a tsetse fly. Oh god! And then, but she was like a special ops in the UK, and she was a, a lady, and she fucking went in on this girl. Mm. She goes, "You are a casualty of war. You sit up, you sit down, and you shut up. Mm. You do what we tell you to do." Because she was not helping at all. She was dead weight. Oh, this is when they were doing multiple, like, the tribe shit, right? Yeah, and they have to meet, and they start meeting each other from different parts Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I love that shit. Okay, so I think, so those are the XL ones, bro, when they have, like, multiple, oh, yeah, yeah. and then they meet up. Um, and I'm watching one now. So there's a new season right now of XL. So, like, for the XL ones, they stay for, like, 60 days, right? And um, Absolutely. Not. So there's one guy, bro. There's one guy who, in anticipation of his trip, he was eating mad tomatoes. Because his goal is to get there, shit the tomato seeds, and plant Whoa. a little tomato garden. So he's been like, he shitted and he planted the seeds and he's been like watering this shit, trying to grow tomatoes. And he's like, by day 40, these should be edible if I make it that far. Because he's trying to do 60 days. Did it work? I don't know yet. The, the, the season's only been like for like a few weeks now. That's fucking disgusting and <laughs> genius. Isn't that crazy? Dude, there was one episode that had me dying laughing. And the reason why I like Naked and Afraid, because... It really gets to show who you are. Mm. You could talk all this fucking fluff. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I'm the best survivalist. I know exactly what to do. <laughs> there was this episode. I'm not sure if you remember this one, but I think they were in Madagascar. Mm-hmm. And there was a lady. She was a hippie. She goes, I don't kill anything. Mm-hmm. Everything in life has a purpose. And so they're walking by, and they see tinder and kindling, which is from a bird's nest. Mm-hmm. A lot of feathers, a lot of like little small branches. He's about to grab it. She goes, we should leave it. We don't need it. He goes, we're in a survival situation. We're, we're going to take this. She goes, no, don't disturb nature. Mm-hmm. And he's like, bitch, what the fuck are you doing on this show? <laughs> Come on, son. So she starts going on this whole spiritual rant about you don't disturb anything. You don't kill anything at all. Okay. And then at night, they're sleeping, right? Yeah. And they found out where they were sleeping was under a bed of black widows. <laughs> Holy shit. And then it cuts to a scene of her going, we have to kill these things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> This bitch got a torch and lit the whole <laughs> colony on fire. That is how real that shit gets. Bruh, there was one, it was one of the XL ones where this girl who was normally a vegetarian, right? She's like, ah, oh, 
She's like, I can't take it anymore. She's like, I, I need to eat some type of protein, right? And she had been surviving for this is another XL one where she had she had joined up with another team, but it was just her and this guy named like Boulen or Boulon, Boulen, some shit. Some dude from like fucking like I don't know, man, Russia, or he had this like thick ass like um Eastern European accent, okay. right? And but he's like fucking like he's like I don't know what what are you running for like one of those guys, right? So so she's so hungry. He catches a she someone caught a fish like a big ass catfish in this little lake there next to, and she's like, okay, so do you, are you gonna like cut the head off? Because normally they try to kill like they try to be humane with the killing, right? Quick shoo, to the neck so the animal dies clean, right? So she's like, oh, should I get the knife? And let's say this is the fish mm-hmm. flopping around on the ground. He's like, what do we need a knife for? And fucking punches the fish in the face, dog, to kill it. <laughs> dog, some people are built different, bro. <laughs> who, the f- who the fuck gets into a boxing match with the fish? <laughs> she sees this and she's like, oh, she's ready to puke just from being disgusted at how the fish I was could, killed. I could already imagine her face because there's certain people on the show. I don't know why they call themselves survival experts when they don't know how to survive. Mm. They just look at death. They go, oh, my God. Oh, it was it was a life. We all understand. You're going to die. Yeah. But I appreciate the ones that are that it's like a balance, right? Where they know they have to kill. And they pay respects. And they're like, yes, thank you. Thank you, alligator. Thank you. Thank you. um, (laughs) Thank you, tarantula, for for providing me with the nutrients. You know what it would be if I was on that show? You see somebody doing that. I just want to thank you for giving your life. (laughs) You cut to me in a corner. I'm just eating a carcass. (laughs) 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 Fucking you have the head on you. You're wearing the head on your head. (laughs) One of my... um, Another one of my favorite ones, oh, dude. I want you to try these. Too. Oh yes, please bring on the snacks, dude. You're holding out on this me. This is uh, Beto one, and Robin, you could have one of these for sure. Wait, no, it has dairy. Damn it! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> God damn you, vegans! <laughs> but this. Oh, corn! I know you like the corn. I do. This is corn pepeto, dude. Also known as pocky sticks for other people, but this is the Korean version. Send me a piece of pepero, dude. This right here, fire. They don't have this in the states. Corn pepero. Oh, yes. So this is like a Pocky stick, mm-hmm. but the flavor is corn. It's it's sweet, creamy corn. Wow. And I know that you like the corn. I love the corn. Send me a piece of that corn for later. Hey, have yourself a little bit of that corn. Oh, it broke a little bit. I'm going to get a big one. Oh, there you go. Show oh. them that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my. How fire is that? Whoa. That's some corn shit, huh? That's corn. That hits you kind of crazy at first because it tastes like straight up corn. Like they put like Actual corn kernels on corn this. in there, yeah. That's just so good, dude. Mmm. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. That was my favorite one. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Say some for Chia. You know I love me some corn. I know. That's why I got you the corns. Thanks, man. How good is that? That's great. Mmm. Wow. Okay, so one of my favorite ones, while you, while you get more snacks, is this one where, um, I think we talked about this before too, when these two people were next to like like a, a crocodile water, <laughs> and then the woman's like, dude, let's go kill a crocodile, let's go kill an alligator, whatever it was, and the guy's like, mm, I'd rather not go into the water with oh. crocodiles, and she's like, come on, man, don't be a pussy, and he's like, he's like pissed, right, he's like, hmm. Okay, you just call me a pussy, right? <laughs> he like, internalizes yeah. that shit. <laughs> so then finally, <laughs> so she ends up tapping out for whatever reason, and then he's there by himself, and he's like, I man, I need protein. I'm going to see if I can kill a little, little crocodile, right? So ne- long story short, he goes, he fucking kills a crocodile, and he's, he's walking back with it, and he's like, yeah, who's a pussy now? <laughs> <laughs> She's already eliminated. He's She's gone. not even there. <laughs> Say he has an inner bottle on Just stewing for like two weeks. Call me a pussy. Oh, the fuck, I ain't no pussy. I'll kill a crocodile. I'll kill a crocodile right now. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. I still want to kill a crocodile. And then he's like wearing like a necklace of like teeth around his neck. There was this one dude that was a, a like a devout Mormon. Mm. And this fool was losing his fucking mind. Because mm. for like the whole episode, he kept on trying to catch this little lizard that he couldn't catch. Mm. And when he finally caught it, he bit the lizard's head off. <laughs> With, with his fucking mouth, oh my bit God. it off, and he goes, ah! Starts screaming in the air. Yeah. Because he was losing his mind. 
because he was trying to catch this lizard for fucking days and wow. he finally caught it and he and it just causes so much like catharsis and relief he just started screaming like a maniac jeez dude naked and afraid really does show you who you are and i know for a fact I would have been gone in about two hours. Oh, 100%. The amount of mosquito bites that these motherfuckers get is oh, crazy. That's bro. why they need the fire. They get lit up. It's at, disgusting. Are you one of these? Because I'm one of these people that mosquitoes are already kind of drawn to me. Yep. Oh, we got that sweet blood. Dude, I was outside in the, uh, the backyard for like maybe 20 minutes. I got bit three times yesterday. Man. They fucking love my calves, dude. They will light me up, dog. Won't, won't hit you at all. If we're in the same place, but they will fuck because I got like big ass veins too. Oh, you they just see it. They're like, oh, buffet. yeah, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> hometown buffet time. <laughs> Try this one. This one is an oh yes bar. So if you guys had something like choco pies before, mm. uh, choco pies are like our Korean moon pies. They're just a little more drier and crumbly. This right here is an oh yes bar. This strawberry inside. Oh my! I mean, and cream. Strawberries Every- and cream. Oh, it's chocolate. chocolatey. Chocolate. Oh, my Lord. Soft. Mm. Very soft. Chocolatey. Delectable. Delicious. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. What does this taste like? It tastes like um, the inside is almost like two really soft pieces of white bread. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. A little mm-hmm. strawberry cream sandwich. Also, too, for you later when you're at home. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had a, um, so you have Korean uh, lamyun, right? The mm-hmm. Korean noodles, mm-hmm. instant noodles to me are the fucking best. Mm-hmm. And I arguably like it better than actual traditional ramen, which I know it's crazy. It's just what I grew up with. But that we have this other thing called uh, chacharoni and chapagetti. And chapagetti is basically instant jajangmyeon, the, the Korean black bean noodles. Right? Have you ever had the Korean black bean noodles? There's Korean Chinese black bean noodles. I don't think so. So like Chinese is like zazangmyeon. And then we have an iteration of it from uh, a certain part of Korea that borderline touches China. And from then, from that point, they made their own cuisine of Chinese Korean uh, cuisine. And so we have something called jajangmyeon that we eat a lot, which is just an iteration of, of uh, a Chinese dish. Not gonna lie, I zoned out. Okay. Well, <laughs> and this is why when we do food shows, <laughs> I'm over here always explaining the fucking food. And he's always like, shut up! Give it, was, it to me! It was too much Jaja Gettys and Jaja Mien's and, and, and <laughs> Jar Jar Pinks and <laughs> Charmanders. So, I zoned out. This just give me the food to eat. I just had a flashback of what I do in class. <laughs> <laughs> when things happen, I'm just So this is a version of it's a dry noodle. Okay. It's of the of the Korean uh black bean noodle, but Ooh. it's a truffle version of it. What? And they don't have this in the States. Wow. So you can make that at home and eat it. It's delicious. Oh, my God. What protein should I add to this? Oh, you could add whatever you want to it. Mm. You could do like a, I don't know, fucking beef, pork. I'm going to go in. Slice cucumbers on top of that, whatever you want. Okay. Delicious, dude. Okay. This right here, man, is the shit. A lot of calories, but fucking good. Oh, who cares? Who cares about calories when we're talking about flavor? Plus, we got to build up calories, bro. We're going on Naked and Afraid next week. Okay. Let me tell you something. I would... (laughs) eat you in the first <laughs> two days you would wake up and then your foot would be missing <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen have you ever watched city slickers 2 okay so city slickers 2 <laughs> have you watched city slickers the movie yes okay so Not city slickers though. 2 oh dog one of my actually one of my favorite movies growing up it was so funny uh so <laughs> they're sitting around the campfire because they get like stranded in the desert and one of them uh billy crystal's homie i think the one that um the the one that was in home alone uh anyways doesn't matter he's like hey uh if if we if I die first, um, I want you to eat me. And Billy Crystal's like, "Why would you say that?" And so he's like, "He's like that's yeah, so yeah. that's so weird." He's like, and "I think the guy's name is Phil." He's like, "Hmm, do you have any more Phil? Pass the Phil. Let me get a bite of that Phil." But um, I would want you to eat me if I ever died on and we were on a trip. I would give you permission. Oh, you don't have to say that. I'll do it. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't need permission. It's just gonna happen. You're just yeah. even when you're alive, like you're, you're just gonna wake up and it's just meat on bone as a bone oh hanging. Oh my god! You're like, what happened to my foot? Oh, I got hungry, Tim. Uh, I have meaty feet. Um, Your feet could feed me for a couple of days, <laughs> and you'll still survive. Also, my cakes are pretty. You know, if you want to get some good, like uh, fatty, I'll, I'll leave the I'll leave the ass for later. You're not gonna eat my ass, <laughs> <laughs> bro. You gotta eat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pause. <laughs> 
Hey, yo, pause. Hey, pause. Pause that. Pause. Well, guys, <laughs> that wraps up this episode of Dudes Behind the Food. Yes, sir. Hey, man, it's good to have you back. Hey, man, it feels great, dude. Sherry Cole, you're talking. <laughs> Thank you for all the snacks. It's delicious. You guys catch us at the Fuck Wild. Uh, yeah, make sure you uh, like, comment, subscribe, share it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Yo, it's the dudes behind the food. Dudes.